Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. We're going to get started in about uh, 30 seconds. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. We're just going to give everybody a couple more seconds to get settled in. Okay, thank you guys for joining. I am Ellie Mansour. I'm the marketing manager here at Choice Solutions. I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Dana Steinlogge with Choice Solutions. Hey, thanks, Ellie. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Um, I uh, just from our team, one of the partners and co-lead up our, our sales team. So just on behalf of Choice Solutions, uh, thank you all for for taking time. Uh, we respect your time and know you have busy schedules. Uh, anytime we put together an event, it's always very important to us that uh, we feel like it's something extremely relevant. It'll bring insights and value to help you with with things you're working towards uh, today. So, and we truly believe that's the case. So. Um, we're going to focus on uh, something that, that comes up a lot, and I'm sure with, with yourselves and with everyone else, but as you adopt uh, Microsoft Cloud strategies and entitlements uh, and looking towards, you know, making full full usage of those entitlements, uh, you know, there's there's new opportunities. And so, but, you know, with new, there comes education, there comes kind of figuring out and learning. And that, that's a little bit what we're, what we're aiming for today. And we're bringing in a partner of ours in Centra uh, that we've introduced to to a number of other customers. Um, and some of you already on this on this session. Uh, to kind of share share some insights there. But before we do, I was just gonna, for those of you who haven't uh, have been a part of a session with us before or are not maybe as familiar with, with our team at Choice, I was just gonna give you just a, a real quick background uh, on familiarization with our company, with our team. So uh, we've had the opportunity to work across uh, the central US and in the Southeast, but through reputation and uh, just doing, hopefully executing and doing good work, uh, we've earned the opportunity to serve you know clients across 43 different states over the last uh, five, six years. Uh, some of the what we're focused on, things that we know that you're focused on as an organization, is you know, you're you're working towards uh, that modern workplace, and, and you know there's that that delicate balance between you know there's there's things that your workforce is desiring and looking for, you know, in order for them to be productive, for them to be empowered, uh, for them to have that consistent, you know, secure access to to the applications, the desktops, the data. That they need to be productive, and then at the business level, you know, we know that you're looking for ways to one, you know, it's security and control is paramount. Uh, you want to have engaged team members, uh, but you also want to leverage techno technology as a tool to help with the the overall employee experience. So, so attracting and retaining uh, today's top talent. Uh, along with that, we know just that. We're all a part, you know, some level of journey in this cloud transformation, you know, going from the legacy uh, apps, the legacy data center approaches over to maybe some sort of hybrid cloud uh, reality for your business, whether that's a mix of things that might be on-prem uh, for legacy applications or things to just make sure from security or optimization or just efficiencies uh, to leverage, you know, the, the latest technologies for your private cloud, which applications make sense to adopt and leverage SaaS, you know, if it's Office 365, uh, other entitlements like that, and then which which parts of your business, which parts of your workloads make sense for, for a public cloud. So there, and there's, you know, mix in between, right? Uh, but one of the things we're going to focus on today is kind of part of that transition as you go, for, we've gone from this environment where, you know, we've had secure places uh, to more of one where it's, you know, you're, you're, you know, no longer your users behind uh, fortresses and, and, and secured places all the time. Your users are, are working and they're working from everywhere, from home, from, you know, from mobile, from, from everywhere. And that presents new challenges, uh, new opportunities. Um, but also too, we just know that, you know, for IT organizations, everybody's dealing with constraints of some sort, uh, whether it's being able to keep up with day-to-day -day task, whether it's being able to execute on new projects and maybe you just need insights, you know, uh, advisory, Type of resources or help to come in and hey you know help us to you know, blueprint design of this new direction this new entitlement that we might have in our organization uh, and, and you just have challenges with in-house expertise and or just being able to develop and retain uh, top talent in your environment so for us uh, our focus as a company as a team is helping uh, partner along with companies like yourselves and helping you adopt you know simpler more secure IT approaches uh, from, from the data center or the cloud service all the way out to the secure endpoint. 
uh, and that's our focus. So simple cloud architectures, uh, secure digital workspaces, and, and how leveraging automated IT services. Uh, so we can do a few things. Some of, we might, some of your organizations might be assisting with just technology acquisition, so helping you with you know some leading innovative uh, solutions uh, and and being a being a partner in the product uh, fulfillment. You know, and, and attaining, ordering, um, the life cycle management of those. Uh, but for other organizations, we we provide professional services. We've got a fantastic team, awesome team of in-house expertise and resources uh, to come in and help, whether it be deploying new technology or doing assessments, reviews, things like that, uh, as well as for environments that might need maybe some managed or co-managed type of assistance and day-to-day -day upkeep. Uh, we've got an awesome and, and very fast growing managed services organization, the ability to kind of come in, partner with the organization and fulfill parts or all you know aspects of maybe some of the IT upkeep that you need for, as part of assist, you know, supporting your business and operations. So some of our core uh, technology partners that kind of go into that hybrid cloud you know, reality, that simpler, uh, more secure IT approach, these are some of our core IT partnerships that we have and solutions that we go into. Uh, today, we're gonna focus in, just drill down a little bit further around the Microsoft perspective. And with that, just I'll share, you know, just briefly, we've got an awesome uh, team of in-house engineering resources uh, to come in and partner with your team and help out um, and with that, you know, we've got a growing, uh, growing Microsoft competency in a number of areas. So there's different Microsoft programs that are out there and available um, for you potentially as a customer and for us as a partner where we can come in and help you uh, through, through you know, programs that might be from Microsoft to come in and help you unlock or explore some of the newer technologies uh, that, uh, that we might talk about here today. Uh, but from a technology acquisition perspective, uh, we're not here to help you out with, we're not able to help out with like enterprise agreements, things like that. But a lot of our Microsoft is moving towards is the, the, the CSP, the cloud solutions provider. Uh, the Microsoft's kind of over time going to be working down kind of into a, a more of a simpler uh, acquisition approach for all their, all their licenses. But we're set up as a, a CSP. So whether it be uh, options for licenses that you'd like to pay for monthly, or pay for annually, uh, we can we can assist your team with that. We've got a strong uh, competency and expertise. We've already been built to, uh, along with around end user computing. Uh, so with, if you're thinking about Azure virtual desktops, we've got phenomenal expertise and assistance to, to be able to help you understand, make you know, up, you know, heads, tails, understand kind of what you can do, what you can't do and really learn about that. Um, so we've got some gold competencies, you know, and, and different silver competencies. The main thing I was gonna share here is just, we've got you know, in-house, we've got a great team, but you know, uh, for certain organizations, projects, you know, um, there's there's needs that go beyond uh, beyond our team. And with that, we formed a fantastic partnership in the industry um, with with an organization in Centra, and we've invited them to to join and to share today. Um, we've known uh, Jody Elkins, who leads up the Americas for Incentra for for a number of years, and just with kind of our presence in the industry for a long time, uh, just form a lot of the you know good uh, network of trusted resources and understand kind of things that they're working on and, and doing and. Uh, and Centra is a, a fantastic organization. It's got a lot of similar uh, approaches to, to serving others uh, like we do, but then they take what we've got and they expand that into you know, what is a, an international uh, services organization with some fantastic expertise with, uh, with Microsoft and other technologies as well. So uh, at this point, I'm going to uh, turn it over to and introduce Jody and Josiah. We're gonna kind of go from there. So thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, thanks, Dana. Thanks all for joining. Nice to meet you, sort of, virtually. Uh, my name is Jody Elkins, as Dana said. Uh, I want to do, I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes here and then hand over to Josiah, but I wanted to give quick background on us and Incentra. Uh, myself, I've been in the IT industry for 25 plus years at this point, uh, the first 15 or so on your side of the fence. So I was on the client and user organizations. Um, I used to be quite technical many years ago, uh, but the last uh, 10 years or so on that side of the business, I moved into management. So I held roles like VP of IT, VP of infrastructure, CIO, uh, in a couple of different industries, primarily financial services and healthcare. Um, made the jump to the dark side and ran a partner for a number of years and ultimately launched Incentra in the Americas uh, just a little over five years ago. 
Uh, our expertise, we do a handful of things. One of those things is a heavy focus on Microsoft, and we exist globally specifically to help partners like Choice add more value to you as, the, as their customer. Um, so a couple of quick things on Microsoft. We have multiple gold certifications. To my knowledge, we're still the only uh, partner globally with Microsoft that's never sold a single license or taken partner of record. So we don't drive license sales. We focus entirely on services. So that provides some benefit to, to the customers that we're not beholden to, uh, to vendors like a, like a lot of other vendors are. Uh, and then the other piece is we're one of the, if you're familiar with Microsoft Fast Track, we're one of the original six global Fast Track partners. So we do a lot of work with Microsoft. We have relationships that go all the way to the highest level. Uh, and, and internationally, we drive a lot of Fast Track opportunities for them and on behalf of them. Um, and with that, I am going to get out of the way. We have limited time today, and Josiah is the man with most of the knowledge that you are going to want to hear. So with that, I will hand over to Josiah. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, my name is Josiah Viewer, and I am a cloud solutions architect here at Incentra. Uh, I have been in the industry for uh, way too long now, uh, <laughs> uh, but specifically for the, the past, 12 years, my focus has been around Microsoft Cloud Services, actually dating back to before Office 365 even existed. I did uh, BPOS migrations way back in the day, Business Productivity Online Suite. That was the predecessor to Office 365. And since then, I've been uh, I've helped hundreds of customers um, migrate their services to Office 365, Azure, Intune, pretty much you name it, as well as you know a whole slew of other you know, on-prem technologies, Active Directory, et cetera. Uh, prior to being a consultant, I actually used to run IT for a financial services firm in New York City. Uh, so I actually, similar to Jody, I actually came from the other side of the fence and uh, came over to the dark side here uh, to the consulting where, where I've uh, been doing this. Really, my focus for the past six or seven years has been primarily on what I call highly regulated industries. Uh, so I deal a lot with security and compliance requirements and helping uh, helping those customers with those requirements, get them to the cloud securely, safely, uh, et cetera. And uh, kind of my logic behind that was if you can do the difficult ones, the easy ones are all that much easier. Uh, so before we get into the deck, we do have some quick polls we want to do. Uh, so there's three, three polls that we want to run through real quick. If you guys could please just respond to them, uh, and then we will proceed right into our, our content here. While we're going over the content, while you're doing those polls, I'll go ahead and start with our agenda. So at a very high level, um, just so everyone knows, I hate PowerPoint decks. My, this is 10 slides total. Uh, should be very, uh, <laughs> very quick to get through uh, from that perspective, but I am going to talk quite a bit. We do want to have questions from you guys as well. So I, I believe there is a Q&A panel. You guys can put your questions right in there and we'll address them at the end. But at a high level, we're just going to talk about what is zero trust uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with. We're going to talk about what is Microsoft 365 and Microsoft 365 Endpoint Manager, which ties into those polls that we we just delivered out there. And we're going to talk a little bit about how Endpoint Manager can help with this, and then and then a little bit more about how you can get started and where to begin this transition. Um, I think the last poll is up now, so. All right, I'm going to keep going, and hopefully I'll get those results in a second. Oops, if I go too far on my slide deck. All right, so this is a, this is a, a really crude diagram, <laughs> but it really does indicate what a lot of people are facing today, and what what I consider a legacy architecture for managing uh, managing your infrastructure and and IT operations. Really, um, and it's going to look familiar to a lot of you guys, right? Because traditionally, right, this is how we did. Uh, IT, right? We we build a perimeter around our network, and if you're inside your, your network, uh, we put a bunch of security pieces on top of you, uh, and then, you know, we consider you secure. But as things have transitioned, and I've seen this transition over the past 13 years as I've been focusing on the cloud, we're, we're constantly shifting data outside of that perimeter, right, which has traditionally been our border, 
right? And because of that, our users are accessing data from places outside your corporate network, from a coffee shop, from home with, with COVID and everything, right? Everyone's working from home now. How do they access their data and make sure it's secure, right? And traditionally, the way you've addressed that is by doing a VPN and basically extending your perimeter uh, so that you can let your users work around, uh, you know, from home or from a coffee shop or wherever else. But that's not really a good solution. As anyone who's done VPNs uh, knows, or, or you can also do like a, a VDI environment of some sort. Uh, but again, the, the concept is similar. You're bringing, you're bringing those users into your perimeter, and then once they're in your perimeter, you consider them trusted and they can access your data. Uh, but in reality, VPN has issues. VDI can be very good or, or sometimes have issues as well, depending on how quickly you can scale it and how good your images are. And, and everything else, but what we like to do with once we have this new uh, idea of being outside the perimeter and having data outside that perimeter is how, how do we control that? And that's where zero trust has really come into play. So uh, everyone's heard the, the term trust but verify. Um, the model for zero trust is never trust, always verify, <laughs> basically. Uh, you, it doesn't matter whether a device is inside your network, outside your network, or anything else. We still want to have the same security model uh, to make sure those devices and users are secure before we allow them to access our data. And how, how does it do that? Well, well, we'll get into that a little bit more on, on the next slides. But it, basically what we're doing is we're limiting that concept of trust based on a perimeter. And we're actually targeting uh, a the device itself and the users associated with those devices to validate that they are allowed to access the system in this current set of conditions. So uh, if they're on, you know, uh, a secure Wi-Fi network or if their device is encrypted or not encrypted. Uh, we'll get into that though. Uh, let me see. I, I think I have the poll results. So I'm going to go see here real quick. All right, so I, I like this. Um, uh, we, have, we have some good answers. So we have 60% know the difference between uh, Office 365 and M365. Uh, and we also had, I think, 86% of each uh, indicated that they have M365 and Office 365, which is probably true, but I just want, it's actually a good opportunity to just kind of fill you in if, you, if you're not familiar with it, because that, you know, 40% say they don't know the difference. So let's talk about that real quick. And then we can continue on this real quick. So uh, Microsoft 365 is what I call a suite of suites. Uh, so uh, Office 365 is one of those components inside Microsoft 365. Uh, so there's three major components to Microsoft 365. There's Office 365 itself, which is your productivity tools, Exchange Online, OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, your Office Pro Plus licensing, uh, and you know other other things like Power BI, et cetera, are also included in that. The, the next suite is enterprise mobility and security. And this is actually what we're talking about quite a bit today. So that's where Microsoft Endpoint Manager sits. Uh, and it also includes Azure AD Premium, which gives you your identity protection, which we'll touch on very briefly today, but uh, is a whole topic of a whole other topic of conversation that we can get into. Um, it also includes Azure Information Protection, which is kind of being consolidated down, but uh, essentially that is what Microsoft's document uh, classification and encryption platform. Uh, Cloud App Security, which is Microsoft's uh, CASB product. Uh, and then the last suite on top of that is Windows 10 Enterprise, which is your, your enterprise level licensing for Windows 10. So if you purchase Microsoft 365 E3, you are actually getting Office 365 E3, Enterprise Mobility and Security E3, and Windows 10 Enterprise E3. And if you buy the E5 version of that, you're getting the E5 version of each of those suites. So if you are just on Office 365 today, uh, not Microsoft 365, you will not have the access to the technologies we're talking about today primarily. But if you're on Microsoft 365, you'll actually have all of these components kind of built in your licensing. We'll touch on that a little bit later uh, as well. Um, so going back to our, our deck here. So what are the realities of having that perimeter-based security? Um, 
So first of all, perimeter-based networks only trust users inside a network. Uh, and essentially, like I kind of just talked about, right? We, when you deal with ex external users, you're extending your network and increasing that border uh, to, to include those users. What that means though, is that once you're inside that network, uh, lateral movement becomes much easier because typically speaking, we don't necessarily have all the same level of controls for outside your network as you do inside your network. Uh, you allow open communication between devices inside your network. So, you know, John and Jane can talk to each other directly over the network on their devices uh, and bypass a lot of those exterior based protections like your Palo Alto, your, your, your filtering products, your IPS, IDS typically don't operate internal on your network. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, and this is one of the big components of Microsoft 365, but that kind of that landscape I just talked about is uh, that your security teams and your, your IT operations teams use a, a wide variety of separate and disjointed tools to secure once you're inside that network. Um, so one of the big differentiators with Office 365 is this idea of what I call an integrated ecosystem. Um, and because Microsoft has all of these tools that are interconnected and feed data into each other, they can do some very cool things that other tools can't necessarily do. Um, so for example, if you use Defender for Endpoint, which is Microsoft's uh, endpoint protection product, uh, and you're also using Microsoft's email security product, which is Defender for Office 365, those tools can communicate with each other to provide real-time insight and data into what's occurring. So if, for example, uh, if something gets through your network um, and, and ends up getting onto a device, but Defender detects it at the device level, it can actually feed that data into Defender for, uh, for Office 365 and potentially remove that email after the fact because it has now been detected as a virus at the, at the end layer. So having that integration is, is absolutely uh, crucial. Uh, and one of my big problems is uh, we, we see in IT departments is like I said, that tool overload where I, I, have, I have a customer I'm dealing with right now that has three different endpoint security products installed on their devices. You know, they're running Silence and Carbon Black and I can't remember what the third one is off the top of my head, but, uh, and each one of those has its own independent management platform and monitoring platform. And sure, they feed it into a SIM and they, they have some automation technology built in there. But the, the best tool you, that you can use, the best tool you have in, the, in your repertoire is the one that you actually use and the one that you can manage on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, in my experience, that having that single pane of glass allows you to, to eliminate some of those problems you have where one tool you thought one tool was detecting it but not the other one or uh, you have a configuration error because you didn't realize that you know this one specific tool you know didn't configure this by default because you're not in there as often uh, so that's what ties into the, the zero trust model right we try to to simplify the uh, to, to simplify the security of your endpoints a little bit so you can better monitor and maintain it going forward so what are the benefits? Uh, so going to a zero trust model, uh, the first piece, and this is tied to the identity, right? So being able to use conditional access to ensure that your, your resources are only accessible from compliant devices. So traditionally, right, uh, you know a device is domain joined and you know it's inside your network. And because it's domain joined, you have some other things, right? You have group policies and you may have some other tools. Maybe you have uh, like I, Cisco ICE or something along those lines that, that monitors the actual state of the endpoint. Um, but what we can do here, uh, and we'll get to this again in, in our next slide when we talk about endpoint manager, is actually essentially cloudify those traditional NAC tools, uh, network access control tools, uh, to actually determine the state of a device before it allow, allowing it to access the users or allow users to access application or data. Uh, once you're in the zero trust model too, because you're not just trusting a device because it's inside your network, lateral movement becomes much more difficult because you don't just have open communication, you're inspecting the traffic uh, between everything. And also, and this is probably the most important one as we as we see users migrating, migrating into the cloud, it enables users to be more productive because we're no longer 
just be forcing them to be inside that perimeter. We're, we're just saying your device is secured. It has our, our policies, our tools on them, and you can operate using those devices wherever you want and how you want. So Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Uh, so Microsoft Endpoint Manager, it used to be called Intune for anyone uh, that hasn't uh, heard the flavor of the week name from Microsoft. Uh, Intune has uh, has changed and is now called Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Uh, it is Microsoft's modern management solution uh, for managing devices. Uh, it includes a lot of different components, uh, but it is part of that integrated ecosystem from Microsoft that we just talked about. So at a very high level, um, we can actually deploy Intune and manage that device, similar to how you would manage it with you know, a mobile device management tool. Uh, we use modern management techniques to manage those devices. We can push policies, we can push applications, uh, we can um, we can push PowerShell scripts. <laughs> we can actually automate the entire deployment of a laptop. Uh, so if anyone's ever heard of, of Windows Autopilot, right? Uh, Microsoft Autopilot is Microsoft's equivalent to Apple's DEP program, if anybody remembers that. Uh, Essentially, it allows you to register a device as linked to your organization in such a way that when the user boots that laptop up, it connects to the cloud. The cloud says this serial number and this device is registered to this organization and automatically just prompts them to log in with their, their credentials for Office 365 and enroll the device in Microsoft Endpoint Manager, all automated. So essentially, you can hand a user a laptop in a box sealed from the factory. And that laptop is, can be fully configured by the user with no, no touch point from IT. Um, so they, all they would do is they boot it up, they get the out of box experience, they log in with their Office 365 or Azure AD credentials, uh, and that kicks them into the Intune enrollment process. Intune pushes out all of your applications that are required, all of your security tools, all of your group, essentially group policies, all of your configurations, um, out to those devices to make sure it's compliant. But it also adds another interesting component to it, which is what we call compliance policies. So now outside of just pushing policies to the device, we can manage uh, whether a device is, is essentially compliant. So a, a compliance policy is really a, a baseline for what you consider a device, uh, a compliant device to be. So is it BitLocker encrypted? Does it have a firewall enabled? Uh, does it have um, does it have an antivirus running, an endpoint protection product? Is it up to date? Uh, is it running a, a late version of Windows, etc.? So you can actually say that if a device does not um, does not meet these requirements, is not BitLocker encrypted, the device is immediately flagged as non-compliant. And what we can do is take that compliant status and use it in Azure Active Directory in conditional access policies. So we can actually specify a policy that says if a user uh, is on a device that is not compliant, this is just a, a simple example, they can't use the thick client. So they can't use the Outlook client because that has cache data. But maybe we allow them to use the web app, for example. Uh, or maybe we block it entirely so they can't access uh, any of their services unless the device is compliant. So if you force compliance before we allow them to do anything. One other interesting point talking about the integrated ecosystem is one of those uh, compliance policies ties to Defender for Endpoint, which I, as I mentioned before, is Microsoft's endpoint protection product. So outside of just saying we have an antivirus deployed, we can actually collect a risk state from that device. So is the device you know, low, medium, high uh, state of risk currently, which is based on them having no viruses. It also talks about their, their patching levels, uh, their, it monitors for common CVEs, even with things like Chrome, right? It'll actually say, this version of Chrome this user is running has 80 known vulnerabilities and therefore has a medium risk level. Uh, and that gets fed into your compliance policy so that you can you can actually make a decision over whether the device is compliant based on that. Um, so that, that integrated ecosystem allows us also to do a couple other things, right? So uh, so we we can actually use Microsoft Cloud App Security 
uh, to, to manage what cloud applications we can access on those devices. So in addition to standard like uh, content filtering, so that's content filtering is actually a component of Defender for endpoint instance. And so we can actually say uh, block malicious websites, for example, as just a general content filter. But we can also, using cloud app security, we can create very specific policies that say they can't access uh, Gmail. Uh, as an example, like any other cloud app that is a known cloud app with a known list of IP ranges, et cetera, uh, we can actually specify that the, that this service is either sanctioned or unsanctioned, and then we can control whether that uh, whether those sanctions what happens if an app is unsanctioned, so whether it's blocked entirely or 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 whatever. Um, so as you kind of see, it it is very robust in terms of like the entire platform for for managing these endpoints, getting the state of the device, feeding that back into the identity and allowing you to make smarter security decisions on, on how you do that. One other interesting, this is just a slight side note, one of the, the other interesting components of, of Microsoft Endpoint Manager is what they call Endpoint Analytics. Uh, so this allows you to monitor the performance of those devices. So things like boot time, how many blue screens does it have? Um, you know, are there any like, you know, overall performance problems that we're seeing are there applications that are consistently crashing. Uh, Endpoint Analytics can actually take that data, feed it up into your portal so you can aggregate it and monitor it at a high level to see your performance and, and then also break down into, um, into more detail to try and troubleshoot and remediate issues. Uh, it also has a functionality called proactive remediations. Uh, so proactive remediations allows you to basically build um, automated scripts that detect and respond to specific failures. So say, for example, you know a service needs to be running, but it's known to crash every once in a while. Uh, a proactive remediation would actually run a script to, to assess the state of that service on an hourly basis. And then if that, uh, if that service is down, it can automatically restart it. Uh, it could also you know, be used to take any number of other actions or uh, pretty much the sky's the limit. Anything you can do with with a PowerShell script, you can actually automate and, and bring out. Um, so how does this tie into zero trust? So all of a sudden, by doing this kind of deployment, we can actually analyze the state of the device uh, as compliant or not before, it allowing, before allowing it to access uh, your on-prem network. Now, that could be a cloud service. So I'll, I'll say, I said on-prem network is probably not the right way to word it. So, before you access your applications or services. So natively, right, we can actually say that, you know, any app that's tied to Azure Active Directory, we can take that compliance state, put it in conditional access and, uh, and apply it, right? But on top of that, a lot of your VPN providers nowadays, so say you have a legacy application that runs on-prem and it's not, it's not a SaaS app, it's, it's something that's very legacy and they need to be on VPN to access it we can actually use that same state by tying your VPN uh, into Azure Active Directory. We can essentially use that same condition, uh, conditional access to allow people to access a VPN or not based on their compliance status. Uh, so it allows us to really have um, that fine grained control of when they get in. In reality, right, a lot of people are migrating their applications to the cloud or going to cloud native. Um, but anything that's left over, we can still access and we can still control uh, and we can still provide that level of security for using those VPN technologies, um, et cetera. All right. So uh, what, can we, what can we do? <laughs> What do we do going forward? So this is a, this is a slide I pulled this from from another Microsoft deck, uh, talking about the kind of transition from trend, tra traditional to optimal. Um, so the traditional model is kind of what I've already been saying: devices are domain joined, they're managed through policies or maybe SCCM if you guys are running SCCM, and basically the they're required in order to be on once they're on the network they have access to data essentially. Uh, and, and that's how we provision. Uh, going into the advanced model, uh, devices are now registered also in the cloud. Um, their access is only granted to manager compliant devices. 
And we also enforce DLP policies for those cloud and corporate devices. And then Optimal, we actually use that integrated ecosystem that I talked about to actually assess the, the threat level of that device. And so not just is the device registered and, and compliant. We actually can detect the risk level of the device and the user's login. So uh, this, again, part of that integrated ecosystem is not just the risk of the device, but also the risk of the identity uh, of, of the authentication that occurs. So maybe this user is all of a sudden logging in from uh, a Tor endpoint, or they're logging in from China five minutes after they were logging in from the US. Uh, and that risk level can be also be fed uh, as a point of compliance to, uh, into that same uh, zero trust framework. Um, and the access control is again, uh, gated on the device risk of both corporate and bring your own devices. So I didn't talk about that previously, but um, Microsoft Endpoint Manager uh, can be used to manage both full corporate devices as well as bring as well as individual users' devices. And you can create policies that are different for users in different scenarios. So you can say, you know, maybe uh, maybe a, a BYO device is, is a little bit lighter touch, for example. You don't do all your customizations or or whatever it might be. Or you can keep them identical and basically say, in order to access these systems, uh, you need to uh, you need to have a full complement of, of our deployments. Um, that's that's actually the end of my deck. Uh, so we are coming up on the end of our time. I, I'd like to use this time now to uh, get some questions from you guys and hopefully respond to them. Uh, if you guys, I, I don't know, Ellie, if you can say where the question and answer panel is, that might be helpful because I don't know where it is. Ellie, are you there? Yep, we actually don't have any questions, um, but I can gotcha. let you know if there's any that come in. Oh, there's one. Okay, what what's a common mistake you see customers making? Um, there are a lot of them. <laughs> that's uh, that's the big thing. So um, Probably the most common mistake I see people making is when they start transitioning to the cloud, they try to shoehorn legacy technologies and legacy ideas into the new framework. So rather than thinking about how the cloud can benefit them and deliver new user experiences uh, to their users, one of the most common things people do still is say, oh, you can't access uh, Office 365, anything in Office 365 unless you're on VPN. So I basically just add a restriction that says if you're if you're in that perimeter again, you can access your service that's in the cloud. Uh, so you have to be in to get out. Um, and from a user experience perspective, that's that's uh, not the best. It adds a lot of latency. Microsoft is you know automatically geo load balanced, right? You can deliver optimum and low latency performance to your users no matter where they are in the world, even. And by attaching them to a VPN, you're basically pushing them through. Uh, your corporate data centers to access those services, which limits that capability. But beyond that, right, it doesn't really take advantage of the, the investments you've made uh, in in new technology and new ways you can deliver that experience to your users and help them uh, work better and more productively. Um, I didn't talk about this. I know I think there's another question here, but I'll, I want to mention one other thing over here. So I, I mentioned entitlements. So one of the other big things you can do um, is understand your entitlements. If you're running Microsoft 365 today, not Office 365, Microsoft 365, you have these components built into your licensing. And one of our one of our one of the most common things again we're seeing right now is people who have five different security products that can literally get rid of five security products and use all native Microsoft components. Um, so it, it allows you to consolidate costs. And as I kind of mentioned earlier, it, it brings those security tools under a single pane of glass, a, a single tool to manage, even though they're separate portals, probably, they still feed into each other. And, and being able to monitor one place instead of five is, is a significant advantage. 
And I think the next question I saw was, I'm concerned about putting all my ducks in one place. <laughs> What's my perspective on that? That's a, that's a good question. Um, the, the story of Microsoft uh, and availability and uptime is, is uh, it, it's actually a, a very interesting one. I, I've seen this from the very beginning. Uh, like I said, I, went, I go back to the BPOS days. And when I first started doing cloud migrations, I, I gotta say, like I had that concern a lot, even personally doing these migrations. Um, but what I will say is that it has constantly improved uh, over time. Uh, so at, at this point, the outages are are fairly minimal. Uh, they they occur very rarely, um, and overall, I think it's a it's a it's a, a phenomenal solution with more uptime than what most customers can deliver without spending a small fortune. So if you look at how Microsoft handles available, let's just look at Exchange Online really quickly. Uh, you know, Exchange Online, you have four copies of your database across four different data centers in, in the US if you're a US customer, right? It used to be two data centers with six copies. Now it's four data centers with four copies uh, for, for that. So to deliver a similar environment for any user uh, or any customer or any environment would be, the costs are astronomical, just the Microsoft licensing alone, plus you have the data center cost, plus you have the server cost, et cetera. Um, as far as putting all your 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 data in one place, uh, I still encourage people um, to possibly look at backing up Office 365 elsewhere. And that's not really for availability purposes. It's really just for information management purposes and, and keeping extra copies of data around. It's not required uh, at all. Microsoft has native data compliance um, functionality built in to do data retention and everything else. Uh, but at its core, I think if you're if you're looking at Microsoft solutions, like uh, Exchange is still one of the most popular reports we deal with. Offloading that that specific application to Microsoft is something where who's going to maintain it better than them? Like Microsoft has all the resources, the product teams. So if there's a bug that comes out. Um, they can address it immediately. They have better testing than most customers uh, can can ever dream of, as well as they do these uh, these rollouts. So uh, I can understand the concern, uh, but overall, it's I'd say it's a, a low risk in my mind, just based on every customer that's using it and how many are out there. Another question. So from an operational perspective, how does adopting Microsoft Infomentor compare to other tools we were using today from Microsoft like SCCM? That's a good question. So uh, Microsoft Info Manager is different than SCCM uh, in a number of ways, but the biggest one that, that confuses people is about imaging. Um, so Endpoint Manager does not image a device in the sense that you lay down, you basically have a fresh copy of Windows and you lay down onto a blank hard drive an image of Windows and that's how you do your install. Uh, when you do Microsoft Endpoint Manager, because like I said, you can have that experience of handing a user a device in a box, right? Everything we look at is configuring off of a base. Now, uh, I do have customers who actually integrate with, uh, with their, their OEMs to lay down images before they get delivered out so they can still have a base of an image. But Intune does not do imaging itself. Everything Intune does, or Microsoft Endpoint Manager does, is configure off a baseline uh, and then monitor off that baseline. So, so we can't lay down a fresh copy of Windows, but I can uh, you know, push all my applications and I can customize Windows, I can deploy group policies, et cetera. There are other similar problems like it's not around task and sequences and different things like that from SCCM but yeah all right how does how does your organization best engage to help a customer unpack the entitlements we have access to that's a that's actually a good question so we have uh, we actually have an engagement specifically around this that we call it a map one 
Uh, and our map one engagements are all about uh, assessing your existing environment and building a roadmap uh, based on your business and technical requirements to deploy or consolidate products and services in, into Microsoft Cloud or, or elsewhere, potentially. It doesn't necessarily have to be Microsoft Cloud. Really, it's about speaking and doing workshops with your corporate stakeholders, understanding your requirements, and then saying, hey, let, let, you know, right now we're, we're in this state. We're a legacy model. Everything's at our perimeter. How do we get out? Where do we start, right? Maybe I'm already did Exchange Online. What's next? Right? Do I do OneDrive next? Do I do SharePoint next? Do I do Teams next? Or do I start managing my devices there? And that really revolves around, like I said, what your requirements are on your, on your organization. And at the same time, we'll look at what your entitlements are. So you already have Microsoft 365. And in that, in that road mapping, we'll say this is what the license requirement is to get here. Uh, so if you, if you really want to go all in on the cloud and in, in, in the Microsoft landscape, you're going to go for one of those Microsoft 365 licenses where you get the M365 E3 or 5, so you can have Endpoint Manager, you have Cloud App Security, Windows 10 Enterprise, which gives you all like the advanced credential guard capabilities and uh, virtualization-based security options in Windows 10 out there. And I think I'm out of time. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Jody and Josiah. I have one last follow-up, just quick poll question. If you guys uh, learned something today that you want a follow-up session with Choice and Incentra, um, feel free to answer accordingly. But thank you guys so much for your time. Um, Dana, did you have any closing thoughts? No, I just wanted to, to thank uh, Jody and Josiah. Thank everybody for their time. Um, what we've had the opportunity to work with with Incentra and in a, in a growing number of our, our clients. And they do a fantastic job of really, if you have uh, as leaders, um, you know, helping helping develop that that plan and that strategy, like uh, Josiah was sharing with with their Map One. But you have these new entitlements. You have you have uh, the the vision, and it's kind of starting to kind of unpack that and develop you know the strategy and the plan and the approach. Um, and Centro has got a very qualified team then we've and they're very like-minded so if you're if you like the experience you have in working with us as a team um it's they're just an extension of us and and, uh, and the way they do business and, and serving others and engaging and uh, really help with kind of developing that plan that strategy a roadmap and even execution too so um a great partner and uh, can help with you know challenges you guys might be thinking about there so uh, yeah thank you everybody for your time we, we greatly appreciate it today